Chapter 61 Unexpected guest you are listening at NovelFull.audio After he displayed his ability to control the entire flock of mutated rain swallows, Yunishu realized that Shang Xia shouldn't be risking his life in the upcoming battle. However, his plan was immediately rejected by Shang Xia. Not to mention the fact that traveling alone in the battlefield between the two worlds could prove to be much deadlier than staying on the Tongyu Peak. Even if he managed to find traces of Lu Jitong, they might not be able to hurry back in time. In the worst case, locating Lu Jitong might throw him into a situation that proves to be a whole lot more frightening. The Tongyu Peak hadn't revealed Lu Jitong's actual intentions of leaving the peak. Shang Xia guessed that he was heading for the Zhu family's inheritance, but that was merely a guess. Yunishu chuckled helplessly when he received Shang Xia's response. Of course, Shang Xia came up with another plan. He didn't necessarily have to look for Lu Jitong himself. On the way back to the peak, Shang Xia received Ji Wenlong's permission and brought Yan and I are over. Because of the little bird's significance in the grand scheme of things, Ji Wenlong gave it permission to freely enter the Tongyu Peak. The only drawback was that Shang Xia had to be present whenever it was crossing the protection formation. With the help of the lightning bird, Shang Xia could command the mutated rain swallows to keep tabs on the activity at the four spiritual peak. The moment they received news that the enemy was about to attack, the Tongyu Peak would be able to make sufficient preparations. Due to the fact that Shang Ku and the others still had to discuss defensive measures with Ji Wenlong, Shang Xia decided to take his leave. After leaving the main hall, he returned to the Shang Pavilion. Even though the four spiritual peak could attack at any time, he would never be wrong to choose to raise his strength. As he ascended the mountain, he noticed that the once deserted streets were filled with people. Clearly, many people noticed the battle looming over their heads. Everyone was trying to make their final preparations. Senior Brother Shang Turning his head in the direction of the voice, Shang Xia noticed Zhao Haitang and Huang Zihua walking towards him. A smile formed on his face when he saw Zhao Haitang this time. Congratulations on breaking through. It's all thanks to Senior Brother Shang's assistance. Otherwise, I won't be able to find suitable herbs to advance. Luckily for me, I broke through before the upcoming battle. Shang Xia nodded and turned to Huang Zihua, what about the rest? Three other disciples failed to gather enough herbs. As for those who did, all of them advanced except for one. There were sufficient spaces to train on the Tongyu Peak, and cultivators from the institution could use any of them to advance. The situation was much better than the time they had to advance in the wilderness. After receiving the report from Huang Zihua, Shang Xia muttered, It's all right to fail. There will be chances in the future. The most important thing is to remain calm and not lose confidence in themselves. Huang Zihua laughed, Even though Liang Shui seems dispirited, he should be all right. The success rate of our breakthroughs is too high. Disciples from the other divisions are looking at us in envy. Shang Xia chuckled. Indeed. Anyway, when Liang Shui tries to break through in the future, there should be nothing stopping him. Jiao Haitang interrupted them as she could no longer suppress the curiosity in her heart. Senior Brother Shang, do you know what is going on? Everyone on the Tong Yu Peak is behaving like a headless fly right now. No one cares about us and they're not telling us anything. Raising an eyebrow in shock, Shang Xia asked, How is that possible? Didn't a few instructors enter the Tong Yu Peak too? Are they not saying anything? Senior Brother Shang, you might not know about this, but our division was the last to depart from the institution. By the time we came, the other instructors had already been called away. None of them came back. Huang Zihua explained. It was then Shang Xia realized that the instructors were probably also brought away by Lu Jitang. The disciples of our third outer division are doing better than the rest. At the very least, we have you, senior brother Shang, to stabilize the situation. Those of us who broke through have a direction of what to do. Those who hadn't are trying desperately to advance. 
disciples of the other outer divisions aren't as lucky as us. Many of them can't even afford the most basic of herbs. They're really pitiful, Zhao Haitang added. Lo Shang Xia nodded. It was too bad he couldn't do anything to help them. Even if he wanted to help them, the Shang clan wasn't a charity. There were limits to what he could do. However, a haughty smile appeared on Huang Zihua's face and he continued speaking, Senior Brother Shang, you might not know this, but our fellow disciples are the target of envy right now. Everyone looks at us differently when we walk along the streets. Jiao Haitang slapped his arm when she saw the stupid look on his face. Many fellow disciples in the outer division hope to form a connection with you. However, we rejected them all. We know that the prices of herbs on the Tongyu Peak have reached a new high. Your Shang clan helped us a bunch by giving us some of them at a low price. We can't possibly trouble you even more. Shang Xia laughed, we're fellow disciples and we should help each other. Moreover, teacher Sun requested me to take her place and it's my duty to help you out. Laughter soon filled the air as they continued to chat a little. Jiao Haitang could feel that Shang Xia was a little busy, and she tactfully excused herself. There's one last thing senior brother Shang needs to know. Even though the Contribution Division and Protection Division didn't confiscate the items we have, they sent people to warn us not to reveal anything that happened throughout our journey. Is there something else behind it? Shang Xia thought about it for a moment and chuckled, nope. Just follow whatever they tell you to do. Jiao Haitang nodded, but she sank into thought. Shang Xia seemed to have thought of something and he reminded them, oh right, all of you should check out the scripture depository after advancing. The inheritances and secret manuals there might not be comparable to that in the institution, but they are extremely helpful. Don't miss the chance to raise your strength. After speaking, he hurried back to the Shang Pavilion. Huang Zihua looked at Jiao Haitang who was stuck to her spot and waved his hand in front of her eyes. Let's go. What are you thinking about? I'm thinking about the warning we received, what's the problem with that? Didn't senior brother Shang tell us to follow their instructions? Huang Zihua frowned. Rolling her eyes at him, Jiao Haitang snapped, it's just that we might not be qualified enough to know what the problem is. Hee hee, I have no idea what you just said, Huang Zihua sniggered in response. Turning around in a huff, she decided to leave. As soon as Shang Xia returned to the Shang Pavilion, he was dragged to the highest floor by Shang Quan. He was greeted with the sight of an unexpected guest. Aunt, why are you here? Shang Xia nearly yelled out loud when he saw her. However, he quickly suppressed his voice. What are you doing here? Shouldn't you be back at the clan taking charge of the situation? Shang Xia might sound rude, but there was an unmistakable sense of concern in his voice. Shang Xi giggled softly when she heard what he said. He he, little brat, at least you have a conscience. Shang Xia scratched the back of his head and he realized that Shang Xi wouldn't enter the battlefield between two worlds if there wasn't something important. He also thought about how Shang Quan dragged him over without a word and he asked, Aunt, did you come here on a secret mission? Who else came with you? Shang Quan exchanged a gaze with Shang Shi and a grin appeared on her face. How did you know someone else came? Shang Xia explained, if I'm not wrong, other than the Lu clan, the other clans sent several experts over to the Tong Yu Peak. They're probably here to thwart the plans of the Rose Party, right? Brat, you know quite a bit, Shang Shi smacked his head playfully. If the institution openly sent reinforcements over, the Rose Party would definitely take the chance to infiltrate the Tong Yu Peak. As such, they sent members of the four great clans over in secret to protect the protection formation. It was too bad there was no news of the Lu clan. A great portion of their battle strength was gone, and there were only three great clans left to fight the enemy. Shang Xia's train of thought didn't stop there. Since the rumor of Ko Chongxue's injury was spreading around, coupled with the martial law passed down in the city, the institution chose to send backup to the Tongyu Peak. Their conjecture was basically confirmed. 
the Rose Party probably found another way into the battlefield between two worlds, and they would use the chance to destroy the Tongyu Institution's hard work and accumulation in the past 20 years. Of course, the news provided by Yen Su helped. The Rose Party's main focus was on the Zhu family's inheritance, and they wouldn't join in the Four Spiritual Peaks Offensive. It was too bad they couldn't send the news back to the institution in time. Chapter 62 Screaming all around you are listening at novelfull.audio. On the third level of the Shang Pavilion, Shang Xia circulated the triple mystery polarity art and cultivated for three whole days before stopping. Compared to the time he first started, the process became much smoother. After completing his cultivation session, the inner qi in his body became a little stronger and the yin yang diagram in his dantian grew more solid. Visible improvement wasn't something that could be seen all the time. It was only possible previously as he was consolidating his foundations after breaking through. The stronger he became, the less obvious the improvements would become. All of a sudden, a bold thought entered his mind. He didn't waste any time and started testing it out immediately as the yin yang essence qi in his body started to transform. Half the yin yang diagram started to turn increasingly solid and excitement filled Shang Xia's heart. He focused completely on the yin yang diagram and it became even more corporeal. Slowly releasing his breath, the inner qi in his dantian returned to normal. Shang Xia was afraid that his yin yang essence qi would cause other people to suspect him due to its high purity, but from the looks of it, he had a way to deal with the problem. As long as he willed it, he could make one type of qi appear stronger than the other. As such, he could easily hide the extent of his cultivation. He could pretend that he only had the strength at the small completion stage of the martial extremity realm. He could avoid a lot of suspicion about his insane cultivation speed that way. Of course, hiding the yin yang diagram would be for the best. He didn't wish to reveal anything about his original world. Concentrating on the yin yang diagram for the last time, Shang Xia noticed that there was a lot of remnant heaven and earth qi left from the origin tide. Even though some of them would transform into his own qi when cultivating, he needed to train in some type of special technique in order to use them up completely. As such, he decided that it was time to start on the river sword policy. Because of the incoming battle, raising his strength was necessary. When he finally left cultivation, he had no idea how long had passed. That was one of the reasons the battlefield between the two worlds was so chaotic. There wasn't an actual way to tell the time from the rising and setting of the sun. The moment he opened his eyes, Shang Xia saw that his once organized room was in a mess. Locking his gaze onto the culprit, Shang Xia glared at Yan and Iyer who was sitting on a box. The moment he laid eyes on her, a gasp left his lips. If he wasn't mistaken, he saw something that resembled an eggshell in the box. Weren't they supposed to be his spoils of war after killing the three cultivators from the wind swallow race? Oh shit! Don't tell me she ate all three of them. Shang Xia knew that creatures like the mutated rain swallow were extremely hostile to the eggs of other birds. From the looks of it, the cotton padding that was scattered throughout the room came from inside the box. Reaching over to grab Yen and Iyer, Shang Xia growled, All right, be good, let me see what's inside. I won't blame you if anything happens. If you ate them, so be it. He might be feeling a sense of heartache, but he couldn't do a thing if she ate them. Chirp chirp. Yen and Iyer seemed to be extremely unwilling to move from her spot. However, she wasn't Shang Xia's opponent and could only scoot over to the side. When he saw all three eggs intact, Shang Xia heaved a sigh of relief. It seemed as though the little bird wasn't planning on killing three unborn babies. When Shang Xia was about to turn away, he saw Yen and I resting her body on the other side of the case. Her body trembled unsteadily for a second and a trace of red emerged. Ha! Huh. Shang Xia found it a little weird and he grabbed Yen and I by the body. One. Two. Three. Four. Why were there four eggs? He definitely counted them in the past and there were only three of them. 
The fourth egg had some sort of golden specks on it. There was no way an egg would appear out of thin air, right? Shang Xia looked suspiciously at the fourth egg before turning to Yen and Iyer. Is that your egg? Shang Xia asked. Chirp, chirp. Well, that seemed to be the only explanation. Shang Xia didn't care how displeased Yen and Iyer would be as he lightly tapped the fourth egg. He felt a trace of familiar energy coming from it. He could feel traces of the lightning bird and traces of the lightning origin that he would bathe the birds in from time to time. All right, it seemed as though he had debunked the mystery. When he was in seclusion, Yen and Iyer probably had to find a place to lay her egg. Since she didn't dare to interrupt him, she could only try to look for a nest of her own. When she was rummaging through his stuff to look for suitable materials to build her best, she chanced upon the case with the three other eggs. Wait a minute. If she was planning to lay her egg in the case, why would she empty out the cotton padding around it? What in the world was left to support the eggs? Shang Xia looked at the case and he noticed it was a bunch of fur he obtained somewhere in the past. Chuckling softly, he placed Yen and Iyer down beside him. She hopped back onto the case and sat on top of the four eggs. Laughing, Shang Xia decided to pack up the room before doing anything else. Finding a case on the floor that was broken into, he recalled that it contained several pills. They were nothing important and Shang Xia didn't mind that Yen and Iyer helped herself to it. As for the bottle that held the drop of blood, it was sturdy enough that it wasn't broken. When he finally left his room, Shang Xia ordered an attendant to bring over some thin bamboo strips. He wanted to make a nest for Yen and Iyer before transferring the eggs over. It would be much more comfortable for the little bird that way. When he was done, Shang Xia created another ball of lightning in his palm for Yen and Iyer. When she was done bathing in it, Shang Xia placed her back into her nest and went to the backyard of the Shang Pavilion. There was a massive field behind the pavilion and previously, Shang Xia used it when exercising. This time, he was there to start practicing his river sword policy. There were five manuals in total and a way to comprehend a sword intent. All five manuals had something to do with the Tao of softness and strength. The vigorous sword manual, formless sword manual, flexible sword manual, flexible dual sword manual, and the flexible dual sword formation. Every single technique had its own inner qi controlling art. Of course, the river sword policy in the Tongyu peak wasn't complete. Only the first three manuals were recorded, and the final two contained the true strength of the river sword policy. Most of the techniques recorded in the manuals only provided a general idea. If one wanted to reach a level of accomplishment, they would have to comprehend the theory behind the sword policy. Casually grabbing a long sword at the side of the field, Shang Xia swung it through the air. He started to circulate his inner qi according to the instructions recorded in the manual. The first thing he had to train in was the vigorous sword art. According to the manual, he only required qi that had the strength attribute. As such, the yin yang diagram in his dantian started to rotate and streams of qi flowed through his body. The sword in his arm rose and fell according to the tempo of the qi traveling through his body and his training began. His movements were slightly rigid and the way he circulated his inner qi was a little awkward. He found it difficult to synchronize his movements with the qi traveling through his body. As he practiced it more and more, he became well versed in the movements. The inner qi in his body started to synchronize with his actions and the strength of the vigorous sword art started to show itself. When he was increasing his proficiency in the third move, a sharp scream came from Shang Xia's room and interrupted his training process. Ha! <sighs> How dare you waste resources like this, dot. Chapter 63 Wasting Heaven's Resources You are listening at Novel Full dot Audio. Ha! Ah. The sharp scream came from Shang Shi, and Shang Xia tripped over himself as he tossed the sword in his hand to the side and ran back up the pavilion. When he arrived, Shang Ku, Shang Quan, and Yan Qi were already present. They wanted to barge into the room when Shang Shi's enraged voice rang through the air. 
you little brat. How dare you waste precious resources. Shan Xia heaved a sigh of relief after noticing that nothing was wrong. Shang Quan and Yan Qi gasped in shock while Shang Ku shook his head helplessly. It seemed as though there was no hiding Shang Xia's secret anymore. Yan and I seemed to be in a state of extreme fright when they entered. Shang Xi was holding the nest in her hand and the little bird was chirping desperately at it. Shang Xi couldn't be bothered with the little bird as she glared at Shang Xia who just entered the room. Forcing a smile, Shang Xia asked, Aunt, what? What is going on? You. Do you not know how precious the rain swallow fur is? How dare you make it into a nest? Shang Shi snapped. Shang Ku moved quickly as he approached Shang Shi's side. He looked at the ball of fur in the nest and his eyes widened in shock. Shang Quan walked over and his lips trembled uncontrollably. They thought her screams had something to do with the appearance of the mutated rain swallow but from the looks of it, it was something way more important. Behind Shang Xia, Yan Qi was also craning his neck to look into the nest. It really is a ball of rain swallow fur. It's huge. Shang Quan rubbed his fist together as though he was about to pluck out the entire ball from the nest. His actions were met with aggressive chirps from Yan and Ayer. Shang Kuk coughed lightly, ahem, we expected as much, but didn't think that the brat would be able to gather such a huge ball of it so quickly, Shang Shi looked at Shang Ku and asked, Fifth uncle, what do you mean? This little brat showed off in front of Yen Suer, Ji Wenlong, Shang Bing, Yun Isher, and myself back at the spiritual swallow peak. He brought out an entire flock of mutated rain swallows. All of us expected him to gather a bunch of rain swallow fur eventually. What? A flock of it. And you even allowed someone else to see it. Wait a minute. Did you say that the little brat summoned it to show off? Shang Shi's voice grew higher and higher as she spoke. In her shock, she handed the nest over to Shang Quan. She reached over to twist Shang Xia's ear in a fit of rage. Little brat, look at what you have done now. Our Shang clan could have kept it all for ourselves. Look at what you've done. Shang Xia gnashed his teeth and cried, Aunt, I was wrong. Can you at least tell me why it's so precious? Shang Xi twisted his ear and snapped, Why? Little brat, weren't you always envious of my embroidered cloud case? You've been scheming to get your hands on it for a while now haven't you? There's no need to come up with weird ideas to obtain it anymore. Now that you have such a huge ball of rain swallow fur, it's more than enough to create a massive spatial pouch. Ha! Huh. Shang Xia felt his eyeballs popping out of their sockets. He looked at the ball of fur before looking at the elder standing beside him. Is this what you use to create spatial artifacts? Shang Ku smiled at the side, giving Shang Xia the answer he needed. It didn't take a genius to know that spatial artifacts were extremely rare. As one of the four great clans, the Shang clan only had three embroidered cloud cases when they pooled everyone's resources together. That was also the reason why Shang Xia had lusted for Shang Xi's embroidered cloud case. It was too bad she never gave him a chance to get his hands on it. The family had five graded weapons in total and Shang Xi had the authority to let Shang Xia take away two of them to flaunt his wealth in the institution. However, she refused to allow him to get close to the embroidered cloud case. When Shang Xia saw the look on Shang Xi's face, he turned to look at Yan and I are slowly. He didn't know if he should ask his fifth grandpa or someone else, but he eventually decided to get Shang Quan to enlighten him. Uncle Shang, is the rain swallow fur really required to create the embroidered cloud case? What did she mean by a spatial pouch? Shang Quan looked at Shang Shi and saw her turning her face away in a huff and he chuckled, spatial artifacts are split into different tiers. Rain swallow fur is the most important ingredient when creating them, Shang Quan didn't answer Shang Xia's question directly. Instead, he talked about how precious the treasure was before adding, the embroidered cloud case can be split into different grades according to how much space they contain. They are usually one, 
2 or 3 cubic feet large. That's the limit of an embroidered cloud case. Shang Quan sucked in a long breath before continuing. Shang Shi's case is 3 cubic feet large, and it's the largest storage item in our family. How much rain swallow fur is needed to make that? Shang Xia asked. Shang Quan waved his hand to dismiss Shang Xia's impatience and he continued, if nothing goes wrong, five maces of rain swallow fur is required to create an embroidered cloud case one cubic feet large. One tail of it is required to make an embroidered cloud case two cubic feet large. Two tails of it are required to make one three cubic feet large. Shang Xia looked at the ball of fur in the nest and saw that it was three tails at the very least. According to what Shang Quan said, that was more than enough to make an embroidered cloud case three cubic feet large. Hiss. Shang Xia finally understood why Shang Shi was so agitated. He also realized that he was truly wasting resources. However, he thought of the other thing Shang Shi mentioned. What's a spatial pouch? Calm down. I was just about to explain what it is. A spatial pouch is different from an embroidered cloud case. The case is created with the rain swallow fur on the interior, and even though the fur is the most important ingredient, we still require other treasures to create it. As for a spatial pouch, it's created entirely by the rain swallow fur. Of course, there are also secret techniques involved in the creation process. From what I know, we need to inscribe a time rune on each thread. These runes will interact with each other to form a massive formation to increase the space contained. Seeing the look of confusion on Shang Xia's face, Shang Quan continued, there's no need to be surprised. That's just the outline of it. No one knows if the institution has a complete manual on how to craft one. Even if they do, the craftsman in the Hundred Profession Pavilion might not be able to do it. Looking at Shang Xia's disappointed expression, Shang Quan continued, even though it's difficult to create a spatial pouch, every single one of them contains five cubic feet of space. It's said that spatial pouches at the peak level would be able to store up to ten cubic feet. An embroidered cloud case is nothing more than a toy in front of it. Gulping, Shang Xia asked, how much rain swallow fur do we need to make one? Three tails. Shang Quan chuckled mischievously. That was the exact amount Shang Xia had. However, from what they said, creating a single spatial pouch was a difficult task. If they failed. When Shang Xia was deciding if he should risk it all to request for a spatial pouch, he sighed softly. How long does it take to obtain three tails of fur from a flock of mutated rain swallows? Everyone else was shocked by Shang Xia's sudden question. Shang Quan eventually replied, Did you really find this on a cultivator of the martial realm? Shang Xia finally realized how weird it was, but he nodded in affirmation. Yeah. Once again, he recounted what happened when he obtained the ball of rain swallow fur. He also spoke about the other items he recovered. Shang Quan shook his head slowly, even if they were hunted down by our patrol squads, items of such importance would be held by an expert at the martial intent realm or higher. Unless. The others didn't know of its existence. That's the only possible explanation. We can confirm that the group of cultivators attacked a nest of mutated rain swallows. The fur should have been obtained by the cultivator secretly when rummaging through the lightning bird stash. He might or might not know what it was, but he chose to keep it for himself. Shang Shi deduced. Everyone nodded and seemed to agree with Shang Shi's guess. What do we do now? There isn't an expert capable of creating an embroidered cloud case on the Tong Yu Peak, Shang Quan spoke while looking at Shang Xia. Scratching the back of his head, Shang Xia asked uneasily, Since I haven't thought of what to do with it, why don't we allow Yen and Iyer to keep it to incubate her eggs? Chapter 64 Blood Essence Blood Essence Crystal You are listening at NovelFull.audio Wait. Answer my question. How long does it take to gather three tails of fur? Shang Xia asked once again. 
Of course, while they were still stuck at an impasse on what to do with the fur, it was decided that it would remain in Yen and Iyer's possession. Everyone in the room looked at each other and didn't know what the answer was. Eventually, Shang Quan coughed awkwardly and sighed, if the amount of fur here was gathered from the flock slowly and only obtained after they raided the nest, it might take an extremely long time. Shan Ku shook his head and added, wait a minute. This ball of fur should contain those purposefully gathered up by the birds. What about those that were blown away in the wind? Fifth uncle, you mean, Shang Quan muttered. Shang Ku turned to Shang Xia and spoke. If we manage to gain more control over the flock of rain swallows, we will not only hold the fate of the wind swallow race in our hand. We will also gather enough fur to make a huge amount of spatial artifacts. The fire in Shang Ku's eyes burned bright as he looked at Shang Xia. Even though Shang Xia felt a little uncomfortable in his heart, he had to say that the idea was tempting. Shang Ku definitely had the Shang clan's interest at heart. As such, he chose to remain silent. All of a sudden, Shang Shi yelled, Fifth uncle, we cannot do this. Frowning, Shang Ku looked over at Shang Shi to be met with an exasperated sigh. There's too much riding on this. If we try something like that, our Shang clan will become public enemy number one. Shang Ku was no fool. Otherwise, he wouldn't be able to sit comfortably as the second person in charge of the Shang clan. He was blinded by the gains they could obtain with the flock of mutated rain swallow under Shang Xia's control. He completely forgot the risks associated with it. When Shang Xia displayed his control over the flock of mutated rain swallow to the wind swallow race, Shang Ku knew that the only reason Yen Suer didn't risk it all and fight them to the death for it was due to the support of the Tongyu institution. If not for the tyrannical Tongyu institution standing behind him, the Shang clan would have long been flattened to the ground. Since the rain swallow fur was something crucial to the creation of spatial artifacts, they would only be targeted by many other factions. Holding the fate of the wind swallow race was nothing in comparison. Shang Ku understood that if the Shang clan wanted to obtain the greatest amount of benefits, the best method would be to split the profits with the other powers. With the Tongyu institution at its core, they could stand against any threat that came knocking. Shang Ku felt his heart aching like never before when he thought about how he would have to give up so much. Never in his wildest imagination would he expect Shang Xia to be against using the flock of mutated rain swallows to fight for gains. The reason Shang Xia was able to gain the bird's trust was because he had always seen them as equals. As friends, they wouldn't scheme against each other. Shang Xia sighed and made his decision. Regardless of whether it was the Wind Swallow Race, Tongyu Institution, or the Shang Clan, none of them would be allowed to harm the Rain Swallows. If they wanted to obtain anything from the flock of birds, they would have to promise to put the well-being of the birds first. When Shang Ku saw the absent dot minded look on Shang Xia's face, he muttered, Brat, what are you thinking about? You seem to have a lot of treasures on you. What else are you hiding? Bring it all out. Otherwise, you're not going to know what to do with them. Shang Xia thought about it for a moment and he frowned. I actually have two more. I'm not sure what they are. Since all of you are here, help me look at it. He brought out a case filled with sand dot like objects inside and Shang Xi sneered in response, blue clay. It's a rank 2 treasure and it's mostly used for laying down formations. It would sometimes be used to create graded weapons, and on the rare occasion, it would be used to create medicine for cultivations trying to enter the peak of the martial realm. Shang Shi had been learning from Shang Quan in the past, and with her current position as the caretaker of the Shang clan in Shang Bo's absence, she was extremely knowledgeable about such things. Shang Xia nodded and retrieved a clear crystal bottle that housed a drop of blood. This, Shang Shi seemed to recognize it, but she didn't dare to confirm her guess. As for Shang Quan, he seemed to have thought of something when he saw the drop of blood. His expression changed greatly as he turned to look at Shang Ku. Shang Shi wanted to grab the bottle to get a closer look, but someone snatched it away before she could come close. Fifth uncle, 
Shang Shi raised an eyebrow in surprise. Shang Ke's expression turned deadly serious and he looked at Shang Xia with a trace of hesitation. He didn't know how to phrase his words. Only after some time did he gather his thoughts. This is blood essence. Sometimes, cultivators of the azure spiritual world would call it blood essence crystals. It's used to strengthen the bloodlines of those from the azure spiritual world. Shang Ku eventually explained. Blood essence crystal. Is this what the wind swallow race is relying on to improve their bloodline? Shang Xia gasped. Shang Ku shook his head and laughed, the success rate isn't set in stone. Moreover, it's impossible for them to stop the weakening of their bloodline, Shang Xia continued, how did this come about? Is this what they are after from the mutated rain swallows? Of course not. This blood essence crystal can only form after pure-blooded members of the azure spiritual world die. Those who are capable of something like that are experts in the martial intent realm or higher. Also, the success rate of creating it can't be confirmed. Shang Ku sighed. So that's the case, Shang Xia grinned. This treasure might sound valuable, but it doesn't seem too useful to us. In the future, we can trade with the Wind Swallow race for some good stuff. Shang Xia barely completed his sentence when he saw the serious look on Shang Ku's face. Xiaar, I'm afraid we'll have to take this treasure away from you. Our Shang clan will keep it safe. All right. However, I don't know what you plan to use it for. Fifth Grandpa, why don't you tell me what it can do? Shang Xia chuckled in amusement. Shang Ku smacked Shang Xia's head playfully and chided. You're full of shit. Do you really think that I'll steal your treasures? Anyway, your grandpa boat told all of us to keep it a secret. I can't exactly reveal what this drop of blood can be used for. Whatever the case, the treasure belongs to you and our clan will have to give you suitable compensation if we take it away. However, you can only wait for the battle to end. The resources we have at our command now are channeled into the war, and I'm unable to take anything out. A mischievous smile formed on Shang Xia's face and he tooted, there's no need to rush. As long as Fifth Grandpa doesn't forget about it, that'll be great. Shu. Damn brat. I'm leaving. Shang Ku muttered before rushing off. However, he seemed to have recalled something and his voice echoed in their ears even after he had left. Right, don't tell anyone about Xi'er's appearance here. It's absolutely forbidden to tell anyone of her whereabouts. Shang Quan, Yen Qi, and Shang Xia nodded like chickens pecking on rice. Now that the great clans had sent their core members over, Shang Xia knew that the Tong Yu Peak's plot was about to succeed. After making sure that the Rose Party's objective wasn't the Tong Yu Peak or Tong Yu City, the institution started to send their experts over secretly to the Tong Yu Peak. Not too long after Shang Ku left, Shang Xia's voice rang in the room, Uncle Quan, I have no use for the blue clay. You can deal with it for me. A rank 2 treasure. Ordinary ones would cost 30 silver essence per portion. The expensive ones will reach up to 80 silver essence a portion. Blue clay is pretty rare, and you have an entire case of it. It's slightly more than a portion and a conservative estimate will be 50 pieces of silver essence. All right. Why don't you give me 50 silver essences and you can keep the case? Shang Xia grinned. What the hell? Are you lacking cash right now? Dot as Shang Ku heard the commotion coming from the Shang Pavilion, he felt as though something was amiss but he couldn't put his finger on it. After Shang Xia handed the case over to Shang Quan, everyone left the room. Shang Xia was left alone with Yen and Iyer who returned to her nest. Ha! Huh. Why do I feel like I lost big? Wait a second. All my treasures are gone. They even have their eyes on those I'm left with. No, no, no. I can't keep this up. So what if I manage to gain a bunch of favors? In the end, I'm still a pauper. I have to get something in return. Shang Xia cried after checking up on the treasures he owned. Chirp, chirp. 
Yen Enayer's voice rang softly beside him. When he turned to look at her, he saw the egg sitting peacefully under her butt and he chuckled to himself, we're the only ones left. Haha <laughs> all of them were busy arguing with each other and they didn't notice the fourth egg. These are spiritual creatures that can be tamed the moment they hatch. One of them could even be a lightning bird the moment it emerges from the shell. Chapter 65 Shang Xia's assist you are listening at novelfull.audio. As the situation on the Tong Yu peak became tenser and tenser, Shang Xia could feel the heavy atmosphere even when he was training his sword skills deep within the Shang Pavilion. Due to the dwindling resources, the Shang Pavilion closed its doors as carriages full of resources were sent towards fueling the war efforts of the Tong Yu peak. The Shang clan handed over all their usable resources to the Tong Yu peak for better deployment. The Shang clan wasn't the only one. The resources of the other great clans and small powers were handed over to the Tong Yu peak unconditionally. Now that things were at a critical stage, no one could be bothered with their losses anymore. If the enemy managed to break through their defenses and take over the Tong Yu peak, they would lose a whole lot more. Not only would they lose their only footing in the battlefield between the two worlds, the entrance to the Azure Origin world would be laid bare before those of the Azure Spiritual World. The Yu Continent wouldn't be the only one under threat. With the entrance to their world taken over, the thirteen other continents would come under constant pressure. Shang Quan was so busy his head spun. Luckily for him, Yen Qi was there to provide some support. Ever since the incident in Shang Xia's room, Shang could disappeared after grabbing the bottle of blood essence crystal. In the Shang Pavilion, only the aunt and nephew pair had nothing to do. Shang Xi locked herself in a room and continued to cultivate as though nothing was going on. Other than Shang Ku, Shang Quan, Shang Xia, and Yan Qi, no one else knew that she was on the Tong Yu peak. As for Shang Xia, he immersed himself in his river sword policy. He solidified his foundations a long time ago, and he met with a massive opportunity when breaking through to the martial extremity realm. It was difficult for anyone to imagine how much potential he had accumulated within him. The only reason he hadn't experienced a massive leap in strength was because he failed to find a suitable technique in the past. Now that he obtained the river sword policy, his accumulations quickly showed. It didn't matter if it was his inner chi or his ability to master the sword techniques. Both sides progressed at a terrifying rate. In the training field behind the Shang Pavilion, Shang Xia held the same sword as before as he completed the last move of the vigorous sword art. After training in it for some time, he became extremely familiar with the moves it contained. The way he controlled his inner chi synchronized with his actions, and he was able to display the full strength of his technique. Of course, that was merely the start. Familiarizing himself was one thing, but understanding and using the sword techniques to their fullest potential was another. He had a long way to go. When using the vigorous sword art, Shang Xia noticed that a huge portion of the heaven and earth qi in his Dantian had transformed into his inner qi. Clap, 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 Shang Xia snapped his head around and noticed Shang Xi standing at the corner of the field. From the looks of it, she had been there for some time. You seem free today, Shang Xia muttered. Tossing the sword casually, it clattered while it stabbed straight into the weapon's rack at the side. Cultivating silently became too boring and I decided to stroll around. There aren't many people in the Shang Pavilion now anyway. Shang Shi smiled. I never thought that you would make so much progress in your sword technique. You're really something else. Shang Xia chuckled in amusement. Oh really? I don't think this is the only time I've surprised you, damn brat. Shang Shi pretended to jump and Shang Xia ran to the far corner of the field. What's the matter? Shang Xia could obviously tell that she had something on her mind. Chuckling lightly, Shang Shi flipped her wrist to reveal an embroidered cloud case. A mischievous smile started to form on Shang Xia's face and he cried, Aunt, are you finally willing to give me your embroidered cloud case? However, the case opened slightly and a jade pendant that was roughly two inches long emerged. 
holding it in her hand for some time, Shang Shi threw both the pendant and case towards Shang Xiao. Shang Xia didn't dare to be careless as he ran over to grab them. What? I was kidding. Are you really going to give them to me? Shang Shi snickered in response. Are you chickening out now? Shang Xia didn't dare to joke with his aunt any longer and he quickly returned the case. Yeah. I can't accept this, of course, he only returned the case. The pendant was held firmly in his hand. He could tell that that was the real reason behind Shang Shi's appearance. She threw the embroidered cloud case over as a joke. Humph, scaredy cat, Shang Shi snapped before turning serious. Anyway, you should know that the battle is about to start soon, Shang Xia nodded solemnly. Yeah. Didn't we already make enough preparations? Shang Shi ignored him and continued, now that news of Patriarch Ko's injury has spread through the lands, the Rose Party will definitely not hold back. Aunt, you can relax. We already calculated the odds and came to a conclusion that the experts of the Rose Party wouldn't make a move on our Tong Yu Peak. Can you stop interrupting me? Shang Shi finally snapped. She pinched his ear and dragged him around the field as she continued, once the battle begins, who knows what will happen. Are you so sure that we'll emerge as the final victor? Nothing is set in stone. This talisman can turn into your life-saving treasure. Did you hear me? Shang Xia yelped in pain as he was getting dragged across the field. Yeah, I get it, I get it. Hurry up and let go. Releasing her grip, Shang Shi growled, if anything goes wrong, be smart. Use this talisman and run for your life. Understood. Shang Xia nodded his head in haste. Finally letting him off the hook, her tone turned a tad bit softer and she asked, do you know who has the greatest achievement with our Shang clan's irregular steps? Shang Xia knew the answer when he saw her expression. Of course it's my amazing aunt Shang Shi. This is a rank 3 talisman. Our clan doesn't have a single master capable of creating one of these, and I only managed to obtain it after exhausting a huge portion of my resources. I begged Master Chen of the Hundred Professions Pavilion to create this, and a part of my divine sense is sealed within. The moment it's unleashed, not many martial intent realm cultivators will be able to catch up to you. Shang Shi snorted. And, you, Shang Xia understood that creating a talisman like that would definitely affect Shang Shi's cultivation. Even if she was able to recover in the future, it would be more difficult for her to advance to the next rank. That alone spoke volumes about how much she cared for him. All right, all right, enough of this. There's no need to thank me. Shang Xia shrugged her shoulders and she continued, now that that's done, hand over Jade River. Shang Xia revealed a pained expression as he slowly brought the sword out. Aunt, you should know that, shut up. Shang Xi snapped as she grabbed the sword from his hands. Aunt, do you think that you can use this sword to its fullest potential? Flipping her eyes, she sighed helplessly, if I could, do you think I'll allow you to bring it around and flaunt your wealth? So what if I can't? No matter what, this is a mid-grade weapon. Having one by my side is much better than having nothing, Shang Xia continued, will you take the ivory fan away too? Yeah. We'll have to distribute the best weapons to those who can bring out their strength. I'll give the fan to Yan Qi. Who? Shang Xia cried, stop joking with me. Can Seventh Uncle really use the ivory fan? Thinking about Yan Qi's tough and buff figure, Shang Xia couldn't imagine how such a brute could use a delicate weapon such as the ivory fan. He lost control of himself and a few chuckles left his lips. What else can we do? Our Shang clan can't bring out any more weapons, Shang Shi sighed. Wait a minute. Who said that we only had these two weapons? Shang Xia frowned. Didn't Uncle Quan tell you? He's so busy that I can't even see his shadow these days. What is he supposed to tell me? Shang Shi asked. Before he could explain, they heard hurried footsteps sounding out from outside the Shang pavilion. Ha <laughs> ha. 
Brother Quan, are you there? A loud voice boomed through the air. Crap! What great timing! Shang Xia said as he went out to welcome the guest. When he turned his head, he realized that Shang Xi was nowhere to be found. Brother Quan! Oh! Little Xia, where's your uncle? Seeing as no one was in the Shang Pavilion, the person who arrived went straight to the training field behind and ran into Shang Xiao. Recognizing the newcomer, Shang Xiao laughed, Uncle Hong, my uncle has been extremely busy the past few days. Are you looking for him because of the weapons? The person who came was the craftsman of the Shang clan, Duan Hong. He was pretty talented when it came to blacksmithing, and he had been nurtured by the Shang clan since a long time ago. They hoped that he could become a rank 3 blacksmith and create graded weapons, but he had been stuck at the peak of the second rank for a long time now. Dot he was the person Shang Quan entrusted the weapons with. You know. Duan Hong was slightly taken aback. No shit. All the weapons he gave you belong to me. Shang Xia nearly rolled his eyes, but he managed to control himself. Uncle Quan isn't here. You can just hand the weapons over to me. Oh. All right then. Duan Hong wasn't suspicious at all. Handing the weapons over to Shang Xia was the same as giving them to Shang Quan. The only thing he cared about was to apply for the treasures to try crafting a graded weapon, but it didn't seem appropriate for him to ask Shang Xia about it. As such, he could only take his leave after handing the weapons over. Unwrapping the three packages in his hand, Shang Xi appeared beside him all of a sudden. She stared at the pair of knives with her eyes glittering. Chapter 66 Blade Intent, Sword Chi You Are Listening at Novel Full. Audio. Ant, what do you think of these knives? Shang Xia asked. Shang Xi didn't seem to hear him as she played with the knives happily. A dazed look could be seen in her eyes and she stroked the knives gently. Shang Xia couldn't help but ask again, Aunt, do you know how to use them? Shang Xi's hand stopped on the handle of the knives and she shot a cold glare towards Shang Xia. As the hair on his body stood on end, he saw two rays of light shooting towards him. He dodged on instinct. Blade intent. Shang Xia yelled and he looked at his aunt. You actually managed to comprehend blade intent. For a cultivator who reached a certain accomplishment in the way of the blade, they would comprehend blade intent. When using their techniques, they could attack formlessly through the form of chi. When they improved and reached the next level, they could tear through space itself with their blade light. That was called blade chi. Coupled with a martial intent that specialized in the blade, a cultivator could summon their blade intent at any time. That was what Shang Shi used previously. Even though she had only entered the martial intent realm and remained at the small completion stage, her comprehension of blade intent put her ahead of cultivators at the same level. Eddie E.T. As long as she was using a weapon with a sharp edge, she could utilize her blade intent. Shang Xia laughed bitterly in his heart when he thought about it. Aunt, haven't you thought of making weapons that would suit yourself? Shang Xia asked cautiously. However, Shang Xi's eyes didn't leave the twin knives when she replied, Of course I have. It's just that the weapons I made can't compare to graded weapons. Then. What do you think about this pair of knives? Do you think the clan will accept it if I trade it for the rights to own Jade River? Shang Xi finally looked at Shang Xia when he raised the question. A smile formed on her lips. You brat. Looks like you have everything planned out. Shang Xia chuckled softly in response. Relax. From now on, Jade River is yours. Shang Xi declared all of a sudden. Shang Xia didn't expect her to make the decision on the spot, and he seemed to be stuck in a state of disbelief. Don't you need to ask the elders of our clan? Shang Shi lowered her head to look at the knives again and snorted in contempt, no one will dare to reject the notion. But. Jade River is a mid-grade weapon. Even though the pair of knives can be compared to a mid-grade weapon, it's still, Shang Xia continued. 
It was too bad Shang she wasn't listening to him at all as she kept a pair of knives in her embroidered cloud case. Seeing as they were safe, she turned to Shang Xia and explained, From my point of view, it's more than worth it to trade a treasure I can't even use three-tenth of the power of one that suits me. Anyone who refuses will be going against me. Humph. Even your grandfather will agree with me on this matter. Shang Xia finally relaxed when he saw how confident she was. He turned to the other weapon in his hand and sighed, and, this is another low-dot-grade weapon called the Origin Light. No. It's now called Formless. Why don't you give this to Seventh Uncle? This knife belongs to you. You can give it to whoever you want. The clan won't interfere. Shang Shi muttered. After Duan Hong was done with the knife, the insignia of the Hundred Professions Pavilion was scraped away and it now belonged to the Shang clan. As Shang Xia imbued his inner chi into the knife, light started to distort around it and the blade turned blurry. Shang Shi frowned when she saw the uniqueness of the blade. This dagger is a great weapon indeed. It's able to conceal itself and it's much better than any ordinary weapon, she sucked in a cold breath and continued, strictly speaking, a weapon like that isn't suitable for Yen Qi. Of course, it's much better than sending him into battle with a fan. Shang Xia laughed in response, whatever the case, someone might recognize this dagger even after Uncle Hong's customization, Shang Xi rolled her eyes at him. Are you afraid that someone will recognize it now? Why didn't you think of it sooner? What do you mean? This is a graded weapon. If you were in my shoes, what would you do? Shang Xia pouted. Relax. Since your uncle Quan saw the weapon, he definitely knows what to do with it. How could Shang Xi not see through Shang Xia's intentions? Even though the dagger was obtained by Shang Xia, it definitely belonged to someone on the Tongyu Peak. From the scarcity of weapons in the Shang clan, one could imagine how important a graded weapon was. The moment news of the dagger was revealed, Shang Xia would be dragged into a major conflict. As such, he needed to borrow the clan's power to keep it. A better way to put it was that Shang Xia wanted to use the Shang clan's power to scare the other party so he could keep the weapon. Of course, Shang Xia knew that the value of the weapon was enough for the clan to shield him from the backlash. Naturally, his actions would definitely piss off some people in the clan. Now that Shang Xia had grown up and entered the cultivation world for real, he would no longer be treated like a kid. Even with Shang Bo's support, Shang Xia needed to form his own support in the Shang clan in order to prevent tongues from wagging. It seemed as though his aunt, Shang Xi, was his greatest ally in the clan. Yen Qi might not belong to the Shang clan, but he had been attending to Shang Xia all the time. His cultivation level was at the limit of the martial extremity realm and he was an important combat figure in the clan. It was especially so for the war that was about to break out. The Shang clan only had half their original fighting power and Yen Qi's importance was further accentuated. It wasn't impossible to bestow the low. Grade weapon on him. With the ability to hand the ivory fan over to Shang Quan, Shang Xia would gain extremely strong allies in the Shang clan. His grandfather, Shang Bo, and his fifth grandfather, Shang Ku, might not be able to handle things in the later generations as the forefathers of the clan, but those around him could. I haven't seen Seventh Uncle in a while now. I heard that he's been following Uncle Quan around. I'm afraid that I won't be able to leave the pavilion for some time as I have to enter seclusion again and I hope that Aunt Shi can hand the dagger over to him. Shang Xia said while passing the dagger over. A trace of hesitation could be seen on Shang Xi's face as she muttered, No. He hasn't been seen around Shang Quan for some time now. Did he run into any trouble? What did Uncle Quan say? Shang Xia jumped in fright. That's the weird part. Shang Quan knows where he is, but he refuses to tell me anything. There's something fishy about all this. If Fifth Uncle is around I could look for him, Shang Xia frowned. Does this have something to do with Fifth Grandpa? Shang Xi raised an eyebrow slowly and she muttered, it's not something you have to worry about right now. 
concentrate on your cultivation. Retrieving the weapons, Shang Shi left in a haste. She was an expert in the martial intent realm. Training in the training field was of no use to her. Before she left, she didn't forget to remind Shang Xia to pass the ivory fan to Shang Quan when he saw him. A large grin appeared on Shang Xia's face after Shang Shi had left. Now, the mid-grade weapon finally belonged to him. Putting some of his inner qi into the delicate jade river sword, it became taut in an instant. The first move of the vigorous sword art, torrential advance. His sword stabbed forward and it seemed to contain the might of a thousand men. Shang Xia circulated his inner qi and continued to practice his sword art. A soft glow enveloped the tip of the sword. As he went through the moves one by one, he eventually finished all nine moves of the first manual. Every time he completed one move, the glow around his sword grew longer. The sword light turned more and more solid. When he completed the final move, Twisting Matter, a sword light emerged from the delicate jade river sword and sliced the sword he was using previously in two. When the sword chi dissipated, countless weapons on the rack clattered to the ground. Sword Qi. That was the first appearance of Sword Qi Shang Xia summoned. He might not have reached a complete understanding of the vigorous sword art, but his improvement was clear as day. The delicate Jade River Sword played a role too as it channeled the transformed inner Qi in his body into Sword Qi. Even though the appearance of the Sword Qi wasn't too helpful in telling him how much his strength increased by, it told him that he was on the right track. In the future, he wouldn't face any obstruction when cultivating the vigorous sword art. It was too bad Shang Xia wasn't content with the results. After recovering, he started to swing his sword again. This time, his moves were completely different from the ones he displayed previously. Chapter 67 Stimulation Talisman You are listening at NovelFull.audio as the Tong Yu Peak entered full battle preparations, a heavy atmosphere filled the area. Disciples of the Protection Division would leave from time to time to fight cultivators from the Four Spiritual Peak. Tang Yuan had ordered the patrol squads to give up on patrolling the area and they would throw all their fighting force into the skirmish that was going on with the Four Spiritual Peak. As Lu Jitong brought away a huge portion of the fighting strength, the Tong Yu Peak fell to a disadvantage against their opponents. Every time the patrol squads returned, there would be casualties. The area they controlled reduced day by day. The four spiritual peaks started to encroach on the Tong Yu Peak. When the fight grew more and more intense, the Shang Pavilion experienced an unprecedented period of calm. As the vigorous sword art focused on the aspect of strength, Shang Xia focused on transforming his yin yang essence qi to that of the strength attribute. He discovered that when he used the yin yang diagram, he would be able to unleash double his strength. Since that was the case, he felt that the opposite would be true too. He could easily transform the qi in his body to possess the softness attribute. No good would come if he kept thinking about it. As such, Shang Xia decided to try it. He transformed the inner qi in his body to possess the softness attribute and he swung the sword around. The technique he was displaying was completely different from those described in the vigorous sword art. He started on the second manual contained in the river sword policy, the Formes sword art. Shang Xia's method of cultivation was nothing more than suicide in the eyes of others. One had to achieve balance when they reached the martial extremity realm. They needed to advance carefully as they trained in the two opposing types of qi. Throughout the process, one could easily die if they lost control of their inner qi. As such, cultivators would tread carefully when it came to practicing the opposing type of qi. Training both at the same time was something a madman would do. There were even some cultivators who had no choice but to seal off one type of qi, causing them to miss out on several opportunities. Shang Xia's actions were something they would never be able to understand. As he practiced the formless sword art, he realized that it wasn't living up to its name. It didn't make the strikes formless, and neither did it make the sword. In fact, it was more appropriate to call it a flowing sword style. The way his sword moved became irregular, 
and the difficulty of comprehending the sword art completely was astounding. Every single strike came from an angle one wouldn't expect. The person who trained in the sword art itself would go crazy from trying to master the haphazard sword movements. As the sword technique had high requirements on one's inner chi, Shang Xia contemplated if he should actually start training in it. He had the ability to prevent different types of chi from crashing in his body, but he wasn't confident he could control his chi so intricately that he fulfilled the requirement to utilize the sword art. Luckily for him, the delicate Jade River sword in his hand had a softness attribute of its own and it was the best weapon he could ask for when training in the formless sword art. Previously, his main problem was that the sword still belonged to the Shang clan. It would be taken away when the battle began, but now that he traded it with his aunt, it finally belonged to him. The twin knives were something he obtained alone, and even the clan wouldn't be able to take them away from him. When he saw the river sword policy in the scripture depository, he had already made the decision to trade his treasures for the delicate jade river sword. Despite his greatest efforts, he knew that he wouldn't be able to complete training in both sword arts before the battle began. When Shang Xia finally received his inner qi, he opened his eyes and walked out of his room. Utter silence filled the upper levels of the Shang Pavilion. There would be occasional yells coming from the first floor, but they would quickly disappear. No one came to interrupt Shang Xia's cultivation and in the face of the massive battle, everyone seemed to have forgotten about his existence. Shang Xia chuckled softly. Of course, that wasn't the case. The only reason he could cultivate peacefully was because of the Shang clan's interference. They wanted to keep him away from the battle the best they could. It also had something to do with all the credits he gained. Not only did he single-handedly save his fellow disciples, but he also managed to make the Wind Swallow race back off from the battle. Those were more than enough to make the Tongyu Institution re-evaluate his worth. At the very least, Shang Bing hadn't appeared to reward Shang Xia openly as they were still discussing what he deserved. If Shang Xia was adamant about returning to the Tongyu Institution, no one could force him to stay. Of course, that would cause his image to drop slightly. Circulating his inner qi slowly, Shang Xia casually unleashed his Chaos Essence Lightning Palm as a ball of lightning gathered in his hand. Sending it towards Yan and I, Shang Xia slowly approached the table in his room and picked up his brush. Dipping it into the ink, he started to draw some lightning runes on the tablets laid before him. He was a talented talisman master and he chose to create as many lighting charms as he could. After all, they were the ones that possessed the most destructive power. Since he obtained the thorny brush and the box of jade pendants, Shang Xia could feel that he was closing on becoming a rank 2 talisman master. After selling away some of the treasures, he got Shang Quan to purchase some rank 2 treasures to create talismans. When Shang Quan learned of his intentions, he encouraged Shang Xia to create more rank 1 talismans to consolidate his knowledge and deepen his understanding before trying to make anything better. Shang Xia was in high spirits when Shang Quan brought out a ton of helpful ingredients and items. Shang Quan promised Shang Xia to split the profits after they sold away the talismans Shang Xia created. They were going to split the profits 80.20, with 20% going to the Shang clan. Since Shang Xia broke through, the amount of inner qi he wielded was much more than before. He finally understood the importance of getting good resources. Before breaking through, Shang Xia could rely on the institution and his clan for the resources he required. Now, he would have to look for a huge portion of the treasures he required. When Shang Quan agreed to split the profits of the talismans with Shang Xia, that was the greatest concession the Shang clan could make. Just as he was starting to create the talismans, Shang Xia noticed that there wasn't a single board of lightning wood that was more than a hundred years old. There were only several talisman papers and plaques made from uncommon materials. Even though he could be considered a rank 1 talisman master, he didn't know how to create any other talismans other than the lightning charms. The lightning charms he produced previously had close to 40% of the power in his Chaos Essence lightning palm, but the amount of resources required to make one was terrifying. There was no way they could give him all the resources he needed. 
Adding on the fact that his success rate for crafting those wasn't too high to begin with, the Shang clan would never allow him to try to mass-produce them. Strictly speaking, Shang Xia hadn't made a single cent from any talismans he made. That also allowed him to realize that his talent for creating talismans might not be as high as he thought. If he tried to create rank 2 talismans, he would be wasting a huge bunch of resources for nothing. He could only focus on creating rank 1 talismans with the items before him. Very quickly, he realized that creating lightning attributed talismans was something he was better at. He was capable of creating more than lightning charms. After several tries, he managed to create something new and he looked at the talisman on the table with a smirk on his face. It was a different type of talisman entirely, and it was called the stimulation talisman. It was something used to save a cultivator's life at a critical moment. Chapter 68 Invitation You are listening at NovelFull.audio As the thorny brush flew across the talisman papers on the table, a powerful wave of lightning chi filled the room. His stimulation talisman was complete. He used close to 12 hours to complete the single talisman, and that didn't include the preparation time. With this, our Shang Pavilion should finally be able to earn some money, right? Especially when times are so desperate, Shang Xia inspected the talisman in his hand as he heaved a sigh of relief. I can make a little more preparations next time before I start and get into my peak mental state. I should be able to take one less break during the process and that should lower the chances of failure significantly. Shang Xia muttered to himself. Also, I seem a little unfamiliar when creating the talisman and that resulted in my inner chi becoming unsteady. It increased the consumption of my inner chi and after getting used to it, I should be able to further reduce the number of breaks I need. I'll estimate that I'll need four breaks throughout the entire crafting process. Three of them are absolutely necessary and I'll need to think of a way to get rid of the fourth. Of course, getting rid of two breaks already increased the chances of success by a lot. Shang Xia estimated. The stimulation talisman was one of the more complex ones among the rank 1 talisman. When he re-evaluated his talent earlier, he thought that he might not be as gifted as he was. Now that he successfully created the stimulation talisman, his confidence returned. When he made the lightning charm in the past, he used boards of lightning wood that were hundreds of years old. Now, he only used some talisman paper to create such a complex creation. Shang Xia looked at the ingredients on the table when he was interrupted by a report that someone was there to look for him. A trace of doubt formed in his mind. However, he still invited the guest up. Junior brother Shang, it's been a long time. How have you been? A familiar voice came from outside the door. Gasping in shock, a look of pleasant surprise appeared on his face as he welcomed the guest. Senior brother Tian, long time no see. Oh, senior brother Jean is here too. The two who came were precisely Tian Mengzi and Jean Guanchao. However, they seemed to have donned a disguise before coming over to look for Shang Xia. Inviting them both into the room, Shang Xia spoke, I heard that senior brothers were injured during the battle. I wanted to pay you a visit, but I failed to locate your residences. I'm truly sorry. The two of them looked at each other and laughed, of course you won't be able to find it. There are some people who are trying to hide our condition. A light flashed in Shang Xia's eyes and he muttered, so, you're here today because, is that a stimulation talisman? A gasp interrupted Shang Xia before he could complete his sentence. Shang Xia realized that Jin Guanchao had appeared beside his table without anyone noticing and he was looking at the talisman he just completed. Shang Xia noticed that the aura around Jin Guanchao had grown stronger since they last met. Suppressing his surprise, Shang Xia smiled, I was lucky enough to create one right before you came. Tian Mengzi headed over and after gesturing to Shang Xia, he held the talisman in his hand and examined it carefully. Placing it down properly, he exclaimed, Junior brother Shang, you surprise us every time. The stimulation talisman is one of the hardest ones to create. From the looks of it, you should be close to a rank 2 talisman master. 
Jean Guanchao nodded at the side. This life-saving talisman is worth more than some rank two talismans, senior brothers, you're exaggerating. It's not that easy to become a rank two talisman master. Shang Xia chuckled. The use of a stimulation talisman was like a defibrillator in Shang Xia's original world. It could restart someone's heart after they died. However, its use was much more exaggerated in the world of cultivation. As long as a cultivator's heart was still beating, the stimulation talisman would ensure that their heart continued to pump for a quarter of an hour. That should be more than enough for a cultivator to bring themselves back from the brink of death. Even if they were to die after the time was up, they would be able to handle a lot of things right before they died. As such, the stimulation talisman had another name. It was also called the talisman of last breath. Shang Xia changed the topic quickly. Why did you come all the way here to look for me? Tian Mengizi nodded inside, we guessed that you would know what is going on at the moment. Not many people know that the two of us were injured. Now, those who know think that we're still recovering from our injuries. Shang Xia turned serious. Do you have any instructions for me now that you're here? Tian Mengzi waved his hand casually. We wouldn't dare. We only hope that junior brother Shang can help us with something small. Shang Xia didn't agree immediately. This. What exactly is the favor you need? Junior brother Jean and I received a secret mission from the institution. The two of us are to protect the bridges that connect the main peak to the other mountain peaks from any surprise attacks the four spiritual peak might launch. Tian Mengzi muttered in a low voice. There were six auxiliary peaks around the Tongyu Peak, and they were called Mingxiu, Kaiyuan, Qiling, Luohui, Yushi, and Pinxin respectively. The six of them were connected to the main peak with a long bridge, and they were connected to neighboring peaks the same way. If anyone were to look at the Tongyu Peak from above, they would see that the peaks formed a massive hexagon. With the main peak at the center, every other peak would form a giant triangle with the bridges connected to the main peak. That was the core of the protection formation surrounding the Tongyu Peak. If the bridges were to fall, every peak would lose its support. They wouldn't be able to receive any reinforcements from the Tongyu Peak when that happened. If so, the power of the protection formation would be reduced by two dot thirds. Destruction of the bridges. Shang Xia revealed a puzzled expression. Is the four spiritual peak going to sabotage them with the help of a spy? Shang Xia knew much more than the two of them. He knew that the destruction of the bridges wouldn't be done by those of the four spiritual peak. Instead, the Rose Party would be the ones behind it. Shang Xia could also guess that the appearance of the elites of the three great clans had something to do with that. Tian Mengzi shook his head and sighed, I have no idea. However, all we need to do is to ensure that the bridges remain intact. Anyone who tries to sabotage it will be deemed as a traitor punishable by death. Shang Xia chuckled. Of course. Do you wish to ask for my help to protect the bridges? Tian Mengzi nodded solemnly. Indeed. The bridge between the main peak and the Mingxiu peak is located close to your Shang pavilion. If any bastard sets their eyes on it, we might not be able to stop them in time. We will have to trouble junior brother Shang to deal with it in case that happens. Of course. It's my duty to do something like that. However, I have to say that you really think highly of me. I barely entered the martial extremity realm and you entrusted me with such a difficult task. Aren't you experts who are close to entering the martial intent realm? Shang Xia cried. It's not that easy to enter the martial intent realm, Tian Mengzi laughed bitterly. The Shang Pavilion was the stronghold of the Shang clan on the Tongyu Peak. However, the Pinxin Peak was where the Shang clan actually carried out most of their business and it was where they had to protect when the time came. Since Ji Wenlong and the rest returned from the Four Spiritual Peak, the Shang clan had been given orders to protect the Pinxin Peak. Recently, the Shang clan had been channeling most of their resources there, causing the Shang Pavilion to turn into a ghost town. 
At that moment, Shang Ku and Shang Quan were waiting outside the entrance of a secret region. Shang Quan looked over his shoulder from time to time with an anxious expression on his face. Dot, fifth uncle, it has already been so long. Why isn't there any sign? Shang Quan couldn't suppress his curiosity any longer. Remain calm. Shang Ku opened his eyes and glared at Shang Quan. You're part of the core of our Shang clan. Why are you always so hasty? If you refuse to change your ways, when will you ever condense your divine sense? Shang Quan sighed and he suppressed the worry in his heart. Fifth uncle, I'm worried that he might make the connection now that he has the blood essence crystal. Humph. Do you really think he's stupid? He has been in our family for more than twenty years. Every one of us sees him as our own, Shan Ku muttered. You're right, Shan Quan whispered softly. All of a sudden, a terrifying wave of qi emerged from the top of the mountain and it charged straight towards the foot. The ground started to quake, and Shan Quan widened his eyes in surprise. This. Bloodline recovery. Don't tell me, enough of your bullshit. Hurry up and suppress the sign with me. Do you want everyone to find out our secret? Shang Ku snapped at him. Chapter 69 Slicing through the moon you are listening at novel full dot audio. Yuan Zhen ran into the main hall of the Tong Yu Peak hastily and cried, Master, the deputy patriarch, he, Yuan Zhen's expression changed when he noticed someone else standing in there. What's the matter? Did Lu Jitong send some news over? Ji Wenlong ignored Yuan Zhen's stunned expression and got straight to the point. Yuan Zhen looked at the other person in the hall and he slowly took out the report from his sleeves. I received a message earlier and it seems to be from Deputy Patriarch Lu Jitong. He sent it over by a wind pigeon. Ji Wenlong raised his palm slightly and the letter flew over. Reading the contents, a sneer formed on Ji Wenlong's face. Haha <laughs> old freak, looks like he's trapped somewhere by the Rose Party and he's asking us to send help. He handed the letter over to the other person in the hall and muttered, take a look. The other person in the hall shook his head after reading the letter. Looks like he doesn't care about your attempts to help him. Ji Wenlong's expression sank slightly. The person who came definitely respected him, but the way he spoke was still pretty casual. Waving the letter in his hand, the man continued, requesting for assistance. Humph. He's basically trying to order you to move the entire Tong Yu Peak out to help him. There were hints of blame in his voice and even though Ji Wenlong's expression was grave, he didn't say anything in response. Turning to look at Yuan Zhen, Ji Wenlong asked, Do we save him? How are we supposed to do that? Ji Wenlong sank into silence again. The other man in the hall continued, what do you think is of more importance? The Tong Yu Peak or Deputy Patriarch Lu? Perhaps it's the combination of Deputy Patriarch Lu and the Zhu family's inheritance, seeing as Ji Wenlong was still keeping mum, the man shook the letter in his hand as if to emphasize a point. Look at this. A thousand mile radius around the coral forest. If he really requires assistance, he would have specified a place. How are we supposed to look for him with this vague description? How long will we have to waste? He's clearly afraid that we'll steal his fortune after going over. He probably gave us such a huge area so that we would run into the members of the Rose Party and get into a huge brawl. When both parties are seriously injured, he'll be able to obtain the inheritance and leave unharmed. He might even feel benevolent and save us after he's done, making us owe him a huge favor. Yuan Zhen couldn't hold back any longer and he snapped, that's a little too much, what do you know? The other man roared at him. Anger flashed through Yuan Zhen's face, but seeing as Ji Wenlong had remained silent, he could only suppress his rage. The man looked at Yuan Zhen and chuckled, I have to say. It's been so many years and Lu Jitong's bad habit of scheming against everyone got worse. All right, enough. No matter what, he's still your teacher. Ji Wenlong growled. We cannot lose the Tong Yu Peak. Lu Jitong will have to hold out until the end of the battle. 
After thinking for some time, Ji Wenlong added, let this be a lesson to him. We'll hope that he manages to hold on for long enough. The other person in the hall tooted, of course he will, even though he wanted to continue, he swallowed his words after Ji Wenlong shot a glare at him. When Yuan Zhen left the hall, all the anger in him had dissipated. Looking at the shadow under his feet, Yuan Zhen sighed, looks like I'll have to focus on my cultivation after this battle. I'm the only head of the protection division at the large completion stage of the martial intent realm. I can't fall behind too much. Wait. Why the hell is my shadow moving without me? Yuan Zhen raised his head to look at the skies, and he saw shadows descending rapidly. After sending Tian Mengzi and Jin Guanchao, Shang Xia wanted to complete the third move of the formless sword art. Perhaps it was because of the technique, Shang Xia felt that his thoughts were in disarray after he finished the third move. Leaving the training field, Shang Xia raised his head to see giant beads of water droplets falling towards the Tong Yu Peak. The sound of water rushing entered Shang Xia's ears and the sound got louder and louder. As the inner qi in his body started to slowly speed up, Shang Xia could feel that it was starting to run wild. Cultivators other than him would feel their inner qi battering against the insides of their dantian. Of course, Shang Xia was no ordinary cultivator. The yin yang diagram started to spin and he was jolted awake from the strange trance he had entered. Not good. There's something wrong with the sound. A light flashed in Shang Xia's eyes and he raised his head again only to see rays of light slowly rushing towards the Tong Yu Peak. Those rays of light smashed against the mountain range and the bridges connecting the peak started to sway violently. The protection formation around the Tong Yu Peak started to counterattack the sudden influx of energy. Even so, the rattling of the bridges didn't stop. Heaven and Earth Qi slowly scattered all about. Dot when the protection formation finally suppressed the sound waves, a second round came. The power weakened slightly when it passed the protection formation but the remaining power still slammed into the peak. Ah! A terrifying roar came from the various peaks as several cultivators experienced cultivation deviation. Shang Xia could see several disciples around him with the blood drained from their faces as they tried to keep their inner qi under control. However, there were some who were at peace. Those were the ones who had consolidated their foundations and had reached a certain level of cultivation. At the same time, Shang Xia noticed that there was another moon in the skies above the Tong Yu Peak. It was falling at a terrifying pace, and it was about to crash straight into the Tong Yu Peak. Enough. A roar came from the top of the main peak and a wave of true qi enveloped the area. It completely destroyed the offensive energy waves coming at them. With a single move, Ji Wenlong shattered the first offensive thrown over by the enemy. However, Shang Xia's attention was drawn away by a knife that was soaring high above the Tong Yu Peak. It was the second time he had seen the blade and he knew that it was Ji Wenlong's high dot grade weapon, the lithe blade. With a single slash, it sliced the moon in half. The scene caught the attention of many cultivators on the Tong Yu Peak. A shocking scene played out as the blade separated the moon in half. As a burst of light threatened to blind them, the world seemed to lose all sound. Everyone shut their eyes instinctively and when Shang Xia finally opened his eyes again, he saw a giant crater in the air. Deafening blasts came from above. The protection formation around the Tong Yu Peak caved in completely, and the bridge around the peaks continued to rattle. Eventually, they dissipated the energy that came from above and the crater slowly disappeared. No one knew when, but Ji Wenlong had appeared on top of the Tong Yu Peak. He held the blade in his hand as he stared into the distance. The moon that had been sliced in half released a pained cry as it flew towards the empty space around the Tong Yu Peak. Chapter 70 Upper Division Instructor, Lu Qinglan you are listening at NovelFull.audio. The cultivators were still enamored by Ji Wenlong's strike, but a massive shockwave was kicked up when the moon crashed into the ground below. Well, it came as a surprise when they didn't feel the shockwave blasting against them. 
none of them noticed that the protection formation had already recovered after G1 Long sliced the moon in half, and it counteracted the subsequent energy wave. Lang Xiaoyun, Ran Biluo, how dare you run all the way here to cause trouble? Ji Wenlong roared as he left the range of the protection formation alone. Waving the lithe blade in his hand, he shattered whatever remained of the moon and yet another shockwave battered against the protection formation. The bridges connecting the peaks trembled once again as the six surrounding peaks bore the brunt of the blow. A soft ringing came from each of the six peaks and a myriad of light emerged. The heaven and earth chi that was rampaging about calmed down and became a lot denser than before. Shang Xia felt a wave of qi blasting against his body. He he, Ji Wenlong, you're not our opponent. The voice entered the ears of everyone in the Tongyu Peak. You can try. Ji Wenlong remained motionless as he stood facing the enemy. Two figures appeared eventually and it was a man and a woman. The man looked pretty skinny and he was clad in grey. There was a treacherous look in his eyes and his movements resembled a wolf. He was one of the four leaders of the four spiritual peak, Lang Xiaoyun. The woman was a great beauty who emitted a mature air. Every move she made caused one's heart to flutter. She was Ran Biluo, another one of the four leaders. The two of them stepped in the air as they approached Ji Wenlong slowly. They stopped hundreds of feet away. Ji Wenlong, we've been fighting for close to twenty years now and you're still as stubborn as before. If it was Ko Chongxue who said what you just said, we might be a little afraid. Too bad he's trying to recover from his serious injury now. Today, we'll crush your Tongyu peak whether you like it or not. Ran Biluo sneered and her voice entered the heads of everyone present. When they heard what she said, their expressions changed. If it wasn't because the battle was upon them, Shang Xia was sure that the news would cause more than half of the Tongyu peak to fall into chaos. As for the other half, they would be the ones who had no idea who Ko Chongxue was. Even so, Shang Xia could feel the hearts of various cultivators wavering. That wasn't right. The will of cultivators was as strong as steel. How could they be swayed by a few words? There had to be something off about the woman's speech. Shang Xia quickly made a deduction and thought about the sound wave that caused many of them to lose control of their inner chi earlier. It had to be related to the woman. A wave of worry swept through his heart. What in the world was that kind of power? Was it her martial intent? Or something else? When Shang Xia was still trying to make sense of things, a clear explosion rang in the ears of those on the Tong Yu Peak. It brought them back to reality, and a rough voice took over. Ran Biluo, our Tong Yu Peak isn't a place you can run your mouth off as you please. A long whip extended out from Ji Wenlong's back and it went straight for Ran Biluo's face. Ran Biluo revealed a frosty expression and her wrist whipped about. A short sword that contained seven specialized holes appeared and it blocked the whip. Pa, another crisp explosion could be heard as the whip broke apart into seven pieces before returning to its user. It's you. Ran Biluo might have nullified the attack easily, but her expression sank instantly. Who would have thought that you would enter the battlefield between two worlds, a figure appeared above the Tong Yu Peak and approached Ji Wenlong. Instructor of the Upper Division of the Tong Yu Institution, Lu Qinglan. Looks like you already know who she is. The newcomer was a middle-aged female and her appearance was comparable, if not better than Ran Biluo. Unlike Ran Biluo who had a charming air around her, Lu Qinglan emitted a dignified and noble aura. Lu Qinglan. I've heard of you. Lang Xiaoyun snorted in contempt. He was greeted with a soft chuckle from Lu Qinglan. I'm really honored that you heard of me. I hope we can exchange pointers in the future. I'll personally carve my name into your bones so that you won't forget me. Wow, you're really smart. Are you scared that you can't take me on right now? Lang Xiaoyun sneered. Facing the useless exchange, Ji Wenlong lost his patience and growled, Why are we wasting time talking to each other? If you want to fight, come at me. 
If you're planning to run your mouth off, you can scram. The words barely left his lips when his blade chopped at Lang Xiaoyun. Old wolf, let your granddaddy here see if you improved since we last fought. Ji Wenlong yelled as four rays of light emerged from his blade. Perfect timing. Lang Xiaoyun yelled as a silver ring behind his back appeared to defend himself. Looking at the silver ring, one would think of the moon that appeared earlier. His weapon was called the Startling Moon Loop and it was a high dot grade weapon. As it soared into the air, it emitted three different colors. Silver, blue, and gray lights danced around it and dot it didn't lose out to Ji Wenlong's lithe blade. The blade and loop danced about in mid-air and shockwaves swept across the battlefield. Even though they were hundreds of feet away from the Tongyu Peak, the shockwaves caused the protection formation to cave in once more. Fortunately for Ji Wenlong, he started to suppress Lang Xiaoyun with his relentless attacks and he started to push him away from the Tongyu Peak. When the two men started their brawl, Ran Biluo and Lu Qinglan glared at each other. Hee hee, little sister of the Lu clan, show me what you got. Ran Biluo laughed as her seven conch sword emitted a strange ringing sound. The weapon she wielded was also a high dot grade weapon, and from the looks of it, she wanted to carve out a flower in Lu Qinglan's face. Hee hee, old witch, even if you're not a hundred years old, you should be close to it. Do you really think you qualify to be my older sister? Why don't I call you grandma instead? Lu Qinglan didn't lose in their battle of words. Even though her seven tendon whip was only a mid-grade weapon, it would accurately slash at Ran Biluo's neck every time she swung it. The attacks of the two women were sinister and ruthless and they exchanged many blows in an instant. However, Ran Biluo's cultivation was slightly higher than Lu Qinglan and it was a matter of time before Lu Qinglan would fall to a disadvantage. As such, Lu Qinglan didn't follow in Ji Wenlong's footsteps to drag the battle away from the Tongyu Peak. She wanted to tap on the protection formation when she was no longer able to hold on. Naturally, Ran Biluo was no fool. She saw through Lu Qinglan's intentions instantly. Even so, she didn't try to drag Lu Qinglan away. She decided to go all in and play at whatever game her opponent was laying down and they started to make laps around the protection formation. She would shoot out a ray of sword chi from time to time to attack the barrier. Every time she swung her sword, a weird sound wave would be released. It could affect her opponent's frame of mind and cause them to lose control of their inner chi for a split second. That caused a huge portion of disciples on the Tongyu Peak a lot of trouble whenever she attacked the barrier. That was the result even after Lu Qinglan took the brunt of the blow. If she didn't, the weaker cultivators on the Tongyu Peak would suffer great casualties. Upper Division Instructor Lu Qinglan Looks like she managed to enter the martial extermination realm, Shang Xia thought to himself as he observed the great battle taking place outside the barrier. From the looks of it, it wasn't enough. The four spiritual peak definitely had another expert in hiding. When they revealed themselves, who would the Tongyu peak send out? Ji Wenlong's estimate that the Rose Party wouldn't attack the city might be taken seriously by the institution and they sent numerous experts over to the Tongyu peak. However, they couldn't possibly leave the city defenseless. Under the premise that Ko Chongshue was seriously injured, they needed another martial extermination realm expert to hold the fort down at the Tongyu Institution. As such, the weakness of the institution was laid bare before everyone's eyes. Compared to the Tongyu Institution, the four spiritual peak had way more high-level experts.